Welcome to my channel. If you are new, hi, I am Nicole. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you are in fact a returning subscriber, welcome back to the channel. How are you doing? Happy February. So today's video is for the February polish pickup. I apologize, this is a little late. I am actually recording this on Friday the 4th and polish pickup actually opened up this morning. Uh, if you are new and you have no idea what I am talking about, Polish Pickup, it is a monthly collaboration between many, many, many indie brands. All the products featured are handmade. So the February Polish Pickup is themed after 90s TV shows. And I have not been this excited about a monthly theme since I think like June, which was Rainbow. So yeah, I was super, super, super excited to see that 90s won. As always, I'll have all the sale information as well as links to everything down in the description box. I will also have a link to my blog post with all of my swatch photos. And I also have links to all of the Polish Pickup social media pages my social media pages, as well as timestamps if you would like to skip to see a particular product. So as I mentioned, Polish Pickup opened this morning, or, or it could be tom yesterday morning, depending on when I get this video up. Um, let's just get into this video. First up, we have Bees Knees Lacquer with Jawsome. This polish was inspired by the animated series The Street Sharks and is described as being a blue to purple pastel multichrome base with a gold reflective glitter. It's priced at $13 for 15ml and has no cap. Jawsome had a fantastic formula. The base for this polish is definitely on the sheer side, so you will want to build it up for, in three coats for the most opacity. It can also be used as a topper. I'll have a photo of it um, in one coat over black. The multi-chrome base was very color shifty. I was seeing that blue to purple in person, but I was also seeing like a pink and maybe like a, a golden type of color in here. The reflective glitters in this polish um, will give it some texture once it dries down. So I did pair this one with a glitter smoothing top coat. That will be totally up to your own personal preference on whether or not you do one or two coats of top coat. For the smoothest finish possible, I would recommend going in with two coats of top coat. So this next shot that you are seeing here is I took this one with my iPhone as well as with the flash on. So you won't see it quite like this in real life unless you're looking at it through your phone. But those reflective glitters are going to look absolutely amazing in all types of lighting. Removal on this polish will be on the more messy side due to the reflective glitters. I soaked this one off with no issues. Next up, we have Cameo Colors Lacquers with On Your Mark, Get Set, Go! Cameo Colors was inspired by Double Dare, and this polish is described as being a vibrant and green base with a scattered hollow sparkle, blue shimmer, gold metallic micro flakes, UCC flakes, and a silver hollow micro flake. It's priced at $11.50 for 15ml and has no cap. On Your Mark Get Set Go had a fantastic formula. It started off a little bit sheer, but it built up very nicely and applied very evenly. This one has like a ton of flakies in it, but I didn't. the base did not feel overly thick at all. Everything spread very evenly and easily without giving off any noticeable texture. This polish is also very holographic. It's going to look really cool in all types of lighting. I also especially really like this one with a matte top coat. My photos show this polish in three coats plus top coat. This is going to be a two to three coater depending on your own personal preference. The third coat did deepen the color to what you see in the bottle. Removal will not be overly difficult but it will be a little bit messy. I soaked it off with no issues and no problems with staining. And now we have Color Spectrum Polish with a uh, hey baby. <laughs> this polish was inspired by Beavis and Butthead. Is described as being a brown when cold to a red when warm to a green when hot tri thermal polish loaded with holographic iridescent shifting flakies as well as rose slash melon green glitters. It's priced at $12.50 for 13 ml and has a cap of 115 bottles. Uh, hey baby, had a really great formula. It started changing on me right away. The base did not feel overly thick or thin, and I had zero application issues. I was seeing all of the colors as described. I found the green shade was somewhere between like a sour apple green and like a minty green. The mid color state was like a lighter side of a brick red and the coldest state was like a very dark brick red. The flakies and glitters in here all spread very evenly and easily without giving off any texture. I think this was gonna be a two to three coater depending on your own personal preference. 
I will note that the third coat did deepen the color in the warm state and added some a bit more opacity. Nothing in here will be difficult to remove and I did not experience any staining. Next up is Cupcake Polish with Overcome with Emotion. This polish was inspired by Daria and it is described as being a forest green packed with a red iridescent aurora shimmer and a scattering of silver holographic glitter. It's priced at $13 for 15ml and has no cap. Overcome with Emotion had a fantastic jelly-like formula. It did start off fairly sheer, but it built up very nicely and it applied evenly. The holographic glitters all spread out very evenly and easily without giving off any noticeable texture. The shimmer in here is also very strong. I was seeing a magenta to orange to gold color shift in person. I use three coats for my swatches here plus top coat. I found this one um, is still a little bit sheer. I did have a little bit of visible nail line on the clear part of my nail. I don't think you'll have visible nail line on natural nails, but it's possible. So removal on this polish will not be overly difficult, but I did soak it off with no problems. Next up, we have Fair Maiden Polish with Down by the Creek. This polish was inspired by Dawson's Creek and is described as being a bright blue-green base with a bright gold to aqua to green shimmer and iridescent flakes. It's priced at $12 for 15ml and has no cap. Down by the Creek had a fantastic formula. It does start off very sheer. I wasn't really sure if this was going to build up for full opacity, but it does build up for full opacity in three coats. This polish is also extremely color shifty. I was seeing all of the described colors in person. And the flakies in here all spread out very evenly and easily without giving off any texture. Since this polish is so sheer, it can also be used as a topper. Here I'm showing it in one coat over Orly's Midnight Oasis. And here it is in natural lighting in both the shade, which is seen here, and here it is in direct sunlight. So as you can tell by the amount of video footage I have for this one, I was very much obsessed with this polish. Like it just looked so fun, so cool, and I really love that it was inspired by Dawson's Creek. So I think this one is going to be a solid three coater unless you use it as a topper. Nothing in here will be difficult to remove and I did not experience any staining. Next up we have Fancy Gloss with Courage. This one was inspired by Courage the Cowardly Dog. It is described as being a periwinkle when cold to a dusty purple when warm to a mint when warmer trithermal polish packed with a mixture of flakes and reflective glitters. It's priced at $12.50 for 15ml and has a cap of 500 bottles. Courage had a really great formula. It did feel just slightly on the thicker side of normal, but not at all overly thick. I had zero application issues. The thermal aspect started changing on me right away. So when I was watching this one, I did not actually realize that it was a trithermal. I thought it was a regular um, thermal polish. So to my eye, the cold state was like a light purple that leaned very per periwinkle, which is what I think were the two color states together and I just thought it was one. <laughs> and then the warm state was like a very pale mint green. The flakies and glitters all spread very evenly and easily with giving off minimal texture. I think you'll want to go in for one to two coats of top coat to completely smooth out those reflective glitters. I did pair this polish with a glitter smoothing top coat before going in with my quick dry top coat. This one was very reflective and very sparkly in person. So I swatched this one in three coats plus two coats of top coat. Removal will be on the messy side due to all of those reflective glitters. As always, I recommend soaking this polish off. And now we have Glisten and Glow with Miss Fine. This polish was inspired by the TV show The Nanny. It is described as being a bright magenta jelly polish filled with a color shifting iridescent flake as well as vibrant fuchsia shreds plus a pop of hollow micro flakes. It's priced at $13 for 15 amount and has no cap. Miss Fine had a really fantastic formula. This polish is extremely bright. It is also jam packed with flakies and the glitter shreds but does not feel overly thick at all. I had no application issues. The fuchsia shreds did dry down with a bit of texture, so I did pair this one with the Glisten and Glow Glitter Grabber before going in with my top coat. So I think this one builds up really well in three coats. If you don't mind obvious visible nail line, you can get away with two coats, but to get the color that you see in the bottle, you will want to use three coats for your final manicure. Because I was curious, I also decided to swatch this one in one coat over a blue cream. Removal on this polish will not be overly difficult, but the shreds will make it a bit harder. 
As per usual, I soaked this polish off with no issues and I also had zero problems with staining. So the first non-nail polish item I have to share are the Glisten & Glow Cuticle Oil Remover Pens as well as their Cuticle Oil. It's like a little duo. Um, it's priced at $12.50 and you get two pens and they have no cap. So they are the standard size of like your typical cuticle um, oil pens. They have a fluffy kind of applicator on them. I have really been enjoying these products. I have been using the Glisten & Glow Cuticle Remover since summer of this last year I think it was and then I have been using the cuticle oil from around the fall period I have integrated the oil pens with like my daily nail care routine and then the cuticle remover I have been using on a weekly basis I find both to be really fantastic the fragrances are also really great as well it has been a long time since I have sniffed the lip smacker um, lip balms so I can't, I can't say for sure if the scents are exactly the same. So I do want to note that the cuticle oil does contain sweet almond oil. So if you have a nut allergy, I would not recommend this product. If you do not have a nut allergy, I would in fact recommend this product. Next up, we have Heather's Hughes with Happy Happy Joy Joy. This polish was inspired by the Ren and Stimpy Show. It is described as being a thermal polish that is purple when cold and blue when warm. It's filled with a bright pink shimmer that shifts to an orange and gold as well as silver reflective glitters. It's priced at $12.50 for 15ml and has a cap of 250 bottles. Happy Happy Joy Joy had a fantastic formula. The base did not feel overly thick or thin and I had zero application issues. The thermal aspects are changing on me right away. I found the warm state to be like a bluish periwinkle in person. So the shimmer in here was very strong and very glowy and I did not see any brush strokes. I was seeing that gorgeous orange to gold color shift in person. The reflective pigment in here was very reflective and gave this polish a gorgeous sparkle. It also gave the polish just a little bit of texture once it dried. I did only use one coat of top coat for my swatches. I had this on for like two hours. I did not notice them being the glitters being particularly um, top coat hungry. So this one's gonna be a one to two coater for top coat depending on your own personal preference. So my photos show Happy Happy Joy Joy in three coats plus top coat. This polish will be a two to three coater depending on your own personal preference. Removal will not be overly difficult. I soaked up no issues and no problems with staining. The next non-nail polish item I have to talk about is the Heather's Hughes Cutie Cult Balm. So this cuticle balm is inspired by the episode of Hey Arnold when Arnold and Gerald get stuck downtown as fruits. So this one is called Downtown as fruits. <laughs> the scent description on this one is a blend of ripe banana, apple, strawberries, and sweet cherries with hints of pear berry, lime, vanilla extract, and sugar crystals. It is priced at $11 for 30 ml. It has a cap of 75 jars. This one is also really, really big. Like this is a nice bit of cuticle balm. This is gonna last quite a while. Editing Nicole, I forgot to mention this product does contain sweet almond oil. So if you are allergic to nuts, I would not recommend this product. If you didn't already know, I am a big fan of all of the Heather's Hughes skincare products. Uh, their cuticle, Heather's Cuticle Balm is one of my favorite products also. This month's scent, when I first sniffed this one, I thought it reminded me of the, remember that gum that had like a zebra on it? Each like, each stick of gum had like a different fruit scent. It made me think of that when I first smelled it, but when I was just sniffing it again just now, it was making me think of Juicy Fruit. So it is definitely very fruity, very sweet, right up my alley. I love the scent. And the product itself is also fantastic. This is one of those products that I do personally use in my day-to-day -day life. Personally, I like using cuticle balms when I don't feel like getting a cuticle oil. Like, I, I don't know, I tend to use a lot of cuticle oil and I tend to get my fingers very greasy and cuticle balm is really nice. It does the same job as cuticle oil, but it's a little bit less prone to making you have like greasy fingers, basically. So if you don't like the greasy feeling that sometimes if you over go too far on cuticle oil, you'll definitely like a cuticle balm. Next up, we have Jen and Berries with his friends call him Doc. This polish was inspired by holograms from Star Trek and it is described as being a blue linear holographic base 
with a jade blue to purple multi-chrome shimmer, holographic flakes, as well as micro flakes. It's priced at $13 for 12.5 ml and has a cap of 125 bottles. His friends call him Doc had a gorgeous formula. The base did not feel overly thick or thin and I had zero application issues. The multi-chrome base is extremely color shifty in person. I was seeing a cyan to blue to purple to magenta color shift in person, as well as seeing like a hint of gold at extreme angles. The holographic in here is also just as strong as the multi-chrome. I think this one's gonna be a two to three coater depending on your own nail length and personal preference. Short nails will definitely be good in two coats. I used three coats for my swatches. Nothing in here will be difficult to remove. It does dry down a little bit flat, so you will want top coat for a glossy finish. In person, this polish was absolutely gorgeous, like super, super gorgeous. Next up, we have KB Shimmer with The Chosen One. This polish was inspired by Buffy the Vampire Slayer, in particular, the season one DVD box set image. It is, a, it is described as being a deep base that boasts a color shift from a bold blue to a nearly blackened purple. It also has silver reflective glitters. It's priced at $11 for 15 ml and has no cap. The Chosen One had a fantastic formula. It was definitely on the thicker side of normal, but it applied very evenly and very nicely. In person, I was definitely seeing that deep blue going to that perp dark purplish kind of color shift. The reflective glitters in here will give this polish quite a bit of texture. I would definitely recommend pairing this one with a glitter smoothing top coat to get the smoothest finish possible because this one is also on the more textured side. If you are into textured polishes, you can definitely wear this one without any top coat at all to get like a more gritty kind of sandpapery feel. So I think this polish is going to be a solid one to two coater depending on personal preference and nail length. Shorter nails could definitely get away with one coat. Removal on here is going to be on the very messy side. I would definitely recommend soaking this one off or pairing it with a peel off base coat for the easiest removal. And the next non-nail polish item I have to talk about is the KB Shimmer Sugar Scrub. So I have sung the praises of the KB Shimmer Sugar Scrub for, I feel like it's been like a year now. I've been, I've purchased this product from Polish Pickup many, many times before I was ever sent this one in PR. This is like the go-to sugar scrub for me personally. I love this one for all over body. So this month's scent is cucumber melon. For me personally, I pick up the most of the melon scent. Then I get like a hint of the cucumber. It's very strong on the melon. It smells so good. It is priced at $10 for 9.5 ounces and has no cap. Next up, we have Linby Designs with a simple girl with simple taste. This polish was inspired by Fran Fine's fashions from the show The Nanny. It is described as being a buildable black base with a red to purple to blue shifting magnetic pull, magic hollow flickies, and a hidden red to orange to yellow shifting shimmer. It's priced at $13 for 15 ml and has no cap. This polish had a really great formula. I feel like the description is a little bit different from what I was seeing in person. To be honest, I could not tell that this was a black base. I would personally call it somewhere between like a brown and a bronze shade with like a very strong pink to gold slash orange, maybe a little bit of yellow shimmer. It started off a little bit sheer, but it built up very nicely in two to three coats. Um, as you saw when I was struggling during the live swatch, it was opaque on me in two coats and then I magnetized the third layer. The holographic in here was also very strong. This one was just absolutely gorgeous. This brand always knows how to do a really, really, really good magnetic shimmer polish. So this one's gonna be a two to three coater depending on your own personal preference. Uh, it does dry down a little bit dull so you will want top coat for a glossy finish and nothing will be difficult to remove. Next up, we have a new to the channel brand called Moo Moo Signatures. This polish is called Back to the Stone Age and it is inspired by a childhood cartoon. It is described as being a pink to green duochrome base with gold flakes, iridescent flakes, UCC flakes, as well as holographic flakies. It's priced at $13 for 12 ml and has a cap of 200 bottles. Back to the Stone Age had a really great formula. It does start off a little bit sheer, but it builds up for full opacity very nicely. The base was just slightly on the thicker side, but generally around the thickness that I come to expect for a polish that is just 
packed with flakies. The duochrome shimmer was very strong and I was seeing the colors as described. The flakes all spread very evenly and easily as well without giving off any noticeable texture. So I swatched this one in three coats. I think it'll be a two to three coater depending on your nail length and own personal preference. This one will look fantastic with a matte top coat. So like I mentioned, nothing here will dry down texture. Removal will not be overly difficult. It will be on the messy side if you choose to scrub it off. I soaked it off with no issues. Next up, we have My Indie Polish with Pink Power Ranger. This polish was inspired by the Pink Power Ranger and it is described as being a medium gray curly base with multiple pink glitters and fuchsia flakes. It's priced at $13 for 15 ml and has no cap. Pink Power Ranger had a wonderful formula. It started off a little bit sheer and I was pleasantly surprised that it built up very quickly. The glitters and flakes all spread very evenly and easily with minimal texture. I found the fuchsia flakes in particular behave more like a glitter shred. So they, those were the ones that were really causing the most texture in this polish. I would recommend pairing this polish with a glitter smoothing top coat or at the very least doing two coats of top coat to get a smooth finish. So the glitter mix in here is super fun. I feel like I was also seeing a couple of really small neon yellow and metallic blue Ring. glitters in here as well. I think this one is going to be a two to three coater depending on your own personal preference. Stormy, come here. You are ready to go in? I know, it's cold. I told you it was cold before we came out here. <laughs> okay, let's go in. It was passable in two coats, but I liked it better in three coats. Removal will be on the more difficult side due to all of those glitters and the shreds. Soak it off for the easiest removal process. Next up, we have Nevermind Apothecary with Explaining It All. This polish was inspired by the TV show Clarissa Explains It All. It is described as being a deep royal blue base with a color shift that goes from a red to orange to yellow to green, as well as silver reflective glitter. It's priced at $13 for 15 ml, and it has a cap of 150 bottles, which may change. Explaining It All had a fantastic formula. The shimmer effect was very, very color shifty and I was seeing all the described colors in person. The royal blue base was very pigmented. I really thought this one was going to stain me, but I did not personally experience any staining. I would still recommend doubling up on base coat if your nails are prone to staining. The reflective glitters in here were very, very sparkly. I do find in general reflective glitters tend to be a little top coat hungry, so going in for one to two coats of top coat tends to get you the smoothest finish possible with these types of glitters. Removal will be pretty messy due to those glitters as well. I swatched this polish in three coats. I do think it's likely going to be a solid three coater on pretty much everyone. Removal will not be overly difficult. I soaked it off with no issues. So the next product I have to share are some really cool nail vinyls by Nevermind Apothecary. So you basically get three sheets of nail vinyls with 54 stencils total. It is $10 for the 54 stencils and it has a cap of 100. So I really, really, really love the Nevermind Apothecary nail vinyls, like these ones in particular. It has all of the patterns and designs that you would want from a 90, like from the 90s, like all of the little backgrounds that shows and just media had from that time period are on these vinyls. So I goofed when I was photographing these. They all, I was just really excited to use them and all of my photos came out really, really bad. <laughs> to be perfect now, they all came out really blurry and I didn't check before I started using them. So I'm gonna show pictures of the nail art that I did using them. And I will have everything linked over on my blog post in case anyone wants to know like how I did it. I describe it over there. I will also have a video for real this time going up um, showing how I did everything basically. So I found these vinyls very easy to use. This was my second second time using the Nevermind Apothecary nail vinyls. I will note I did find them a lot easier to use when my nails were shorter. Um, my nails are fairly long right now and they are fairly curved as well. And it was, I wouldn't call it a struggle, but it was definitely a little bit harder to use. However, I would still say they are very easy to use. It was just because my nails are super long. And in my past experience with nail vinyls, I'll say 
Now, the longer your nails are, the harder nail vinyls can be to use. There are some tips and tricks, which I will talk about in my video for this one. And I would say that they are beginner friendly as well. And now we're up to Night Owl Lacquer with Smelly Cat. This was inspired by Phoebe from Friends singing the Smelly Cat song. It, this polish is described as a taupe gray with a pink to purple to green shifting shimmer, chameleon flakes, and aqua crystal flakes. It's priced at $13 for 15 ml and has no cap. Smelly Cat had a fantastic formula. The flakies all spread out very evenly and easily without giving off any texture. The base did not feel overly thick at all despite being jam packed with flakies. It does start out a little bit sheer so you will definitely want to build this one up for the most opacity. It had very even coverage so if you don't mind very obvious visible nail line you can definitely wear this one into coat style. I would say it would be a 2-3 to three coater depending on your own personal preference. I was seeing all of the colors as described in both the shimmer and the flakies. I did find that the flakies in particular really popped in lower lighting situations. This is another polish that like I couldn't stop taking pictures and videos of. It was just really, really gorgeous. So nothing in here will dry down texture or be difficult to remove. It will, however, look fantastic with a matte top coat. Next up, we have Red Eyed Lacquer with your My One in Five Billion. This polish was inspired by the X-Files and is described as being a pink curly base with a pink shifting shimmer, silver and black metallic flakes. It's priced at $12.50 for 12 ml and has a cap of 200 bottles. Your My 1 in 5 Billion had a wonderful formula. I found that base color is that shade of pink that has like hints of like a purple or even like an orchid in it. I found the metallic flakes all spread out very evenly and easily without giving off any noticeable texture. I honestly wasn't really seeing a much of a shimmer on the nail. I didn't really see it in the bottle either, to be honest. So I think this one looked best in three coats. It was a tiny bit sheer in two, but it was passable in two coats, if, especially if you have shorter nails. I love this one with a matte top coat as well. So nothing in here will dry down overly textured or be difficult to remove. And the final non-nail polish item that I have to share is by Red Eyed Lacquer, and this is their De Bomber. De Bomber is another product that I have sung the praises for. I have been using this one quite often, especially now that it is so cold and dry here in Connecticut. So this month's fragrance is a blend of pecan, praline, and pretzels. It is priced at $7 for one ounce and has a cap of 200 jars. And also this one is inspired by the X-Files. So reading the description, I, I'm not really a nutty kind of gal. I don't like nut scented things. This one to me, I, I am undecided on what it smells like. I think I definitely am picking up the nuts. I always find for De Bomber in particular, the fragrance is not a super strong fragrance. It's not going to be overwhelming if you are sensitive to fragrances. I do think that De Bomber in particular would be really good for you because the fragrance is always very, very light and just subtle. Just a heads up, if you are allergic to almonds, once again, I would not recommend this product because this does contain almond oil. But the product De Bomber itself is fantastic. I started keeping one of these in my purse every time I leave the house, I got one on. So yeah, I really genuinely enjoy this product. Next up, we have Restored by Polish with Chronic Glitter Itis. This polish was inspired by ER and is described as being a turquoise jelly base with turquoise and red micro flakes. It's priced at $12 for 12 ml and has a cap of 100 bottles. Chronic Glitter Itis had a fantastic jelly formula. Since this is a jelly polish, you will definitely want to build this one up for the most opacity. I found that to get the color that you see in the bottle, you will want to go in for three coats. Alternatively, I think this could be interesting to play around with as a topper. So the flakes in here all spread out very evenly and easily without giving off any texture. I only needed one coat of top coat to give this a nice glossy finish. I think this one will also look really cool with a matte top coat. So nothing in here will be difficult to remove. I also did not experience any staining. Next up, we have Sassy Sauce Polish with Bada Bing. This polish was inspired by The Sopranos and is described as being a cool, great base with a red slash orange shifting shimmer and black to red multi-chrome flakes. It's priced at $12.50 for 15 ml and has a cap of 300 bottles. Bada Bing had a really great curly formula. It applied buttery smooth and I had zero application issues. 
The flakies in here spread out very evenly and easily without giving off any texture. You will get that beautiful black to red to orange color shift on your nail in those flakies and the shimmer in here was also very strong. In person, I was seeing a red to orange to gold color shift in the shimmer. This polish will likely be a two to three coater depending on your nail length. I think shorter nails will likely be good in two coats. This polish also dries down fairly dull, so you will definitely want top coat to give it a nice glossy finish and to see that shimmer effect. This also looks fantastic with a matte top coat. So nothing in here will be overly difficult to remove and I did not experience any staining. And the final item I have to share is by Zombie Claw Polish and this is called Friendship Is Real. This polish was inspired by Boy Meets World and is described as being a blue base with a mustard and gold metallic flake as well as iridescent flakies and an aurora shimmer. It's priced at $13 for 13ml and I do not have a cap on this one. Friendship is Real had a really great formula. The base did not feel overly thick at all despite being so densely packed with flakies. The flakes also spread very evenly and easily without giving off any texture. So this one is going to be a two to three coater depending on your own personal preference. I'm showing it here in three coats but it was passable in two. The third coat did deepen the base color. The flakies did not seem to dry down with any texture but I did pair this polish with a glitter smoothing top coat before going in with my regular top coat. It also looked amazing mattified and I just love the inspiration for this polish. Nothing in here will be overly difficult to remove and I also did not experience any staining. And so that is everything. So as I mentioned, I was very excited about the theme this month. I knew there were going to be quite a few things that I was going to be extremely excited for just because of the inspiration basically. So, um, so my favorites this month are going to be a mix of favorites because of the theme and then favorites because of the polish itself. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. <laughs> But just know I loved all the products like everything was fantastic. I didn't have any issues with anything These are just my own personal opinions. So in no particular order, but possibly maybe So my first wash I'm gonna talk about is the fair maiden polish down by the creek If you could not tell from the live swatch portion of this video I love Dawson's Creek and I was definitely Pacey had my heart And I just love this polish because it really made me think back at how much I really enjoy that show and also because the polish itself is this really, really beautiful as well. I took like a thousand pictures of this one, a thousand videos. Like I had so much footage of this one because I loved it so much that I just kept recording. <laughs> so this is going to be, I'm going to call this my number one top pick for the month. My next favorite is going to be the My Indie Polish Pink Power Ranger. So I was all, when I was a little kid, I was also a fan of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, I've got, I was going to tell a really funny story about this time I got into a fight with someone over who got to play with the pink Power Ranger doll. I lost, in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> this one's going to be another top pick for me. So when I, when Tanya told me that she was going to do a pink Power Ranger themed polish, and then I saw that the gray, it was a gray base and not a white base, I was kind of like, I actually tend to like gray polishes more than I like white polishes. And gray plus pink is like one of my favorite color combinations. So I was very, very happy to, to get this one on my nail. Just the gray base with the pink glitters. It was just really, really beautiful as well. And in case anyone was wondering about why it's a gray base instead of a white base, Tanya actually, um, her son helped her mix up the polish and he personally liked the gray base more than the white base. So that's why this one is gray in case anyone was curious about that one. Oh gosh, I took out a lot more polishes than I realized. So this next polish is the Nevermind Apothecary Polish Explains It All. I remember watching Clarissa Explains It All. I don't know if it was new when I watched it or if they were reruns. I think I was on the, the younger end of the spectrum watching this one on Nickelodeon. So yeah, I really, really liked that show and I immediately liked this polish because of the show. But once I got it on the nail, I, I was in love. Like it was gorgeous. The shimmer paired with the reflective glitters. It was just, again, everything I wanted in a polish, this was it. This was just really, really fun. And also from Nevermind Apothecary, I also really, really, really liked the nail vinyls by that brand this month. I apologize, I did not have like actual photos. <laughs> I was so excited to use the vinyls that I didn't, my pictures all came out blurry. So I had to retake the photos and then the retaken photos, I had already used the vinyls, so there were like gaps, so. 
I was very excited about them. <laughs> so yeah, I really, really like those nail vinyls. Um, I'm editing a video for using one of the nail art things. I don't know if it's going to go up before this video, probably not to be real. I don't know if it was gonna go up before the end of the sale period, but it's going to go up this time. <laughs> All right, and my next favorite is going to be the Heather's Hughes Polish Happy Happy Joy Joy. I was a huge fan of Ren and Stimpy. Um, I have memories of my sister, tell my, my sister's a few years older than me. She told my parents that it was not a good show and that a little kid should not be watching it. And going back and watching the show as an adult, I definitely <laughs> agree. I, I can't believe that was on, one, a children's network and at a time for children to watch because that show was a doozy, but I, I loved it. So yeah, anyway, so for this polish, this is mostly favorite because of the inspiration as well as for the polish itself. I love Heather's thermals. Heather's, my first polish that I ever bought from Heather was a thermal. So yeah, I... I just love Heather's thermals and I really love the color shift, the, the, the colors in this one paired with the shimmer, paired with the reflective pigment, like I, I loved it. Speaking of shows that I do not think were actually for children, <laughs> we have Fancy Gloss with Courage. Courage the Cowardly Dog was another show that I absolutely loved and watching it as an adult I have questions at why children were watching this show. <laughs> Definitely, like, I would not want my children watching that show. So anyway, this one was a favorite because of the inspiration, as well as I also really like the colors. Next up is going to be no surprise to anyone who has watched this channel for any space of time, is the KB Shimmer Polish, The Chosen One. This one is going to be a favorite because of the inspiration. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favorite TV show of all time, and yeah, this is on there solely because of that. Don't get me wrong, I thought the polish was fantastic, it's gorgeous, it's not my usual cup of tea, and I know that a large part on why I liked it so much was because I knew it was inspired by Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Fantastic polish, really opaque, I liked it a lot, but this is on here because I just love the inspiration. And the final polish that is a favorite solely because of the polish itself, we have Glisten and Glow with Miss Fine. So I am a pink lover, I am a flaky polish lover, and this one just checked those boxes. I thought this was absolutely fantastic and I loved it. Really great formula. I wasn't a huge fan of um, The Nanny. I just wasn't a huge fan. I actually ended up watching it years later um, on reruns basically, and then I actually liked it a lot more. I think I was just too young for it in the 90s. But yeah, this polish was really, really gorgeous. I really wish that I had more of the Glisten and Glow pink flaky polishes to compare this one with because like I want to do comparisons on this one so badly because I know Glisten Glow has released a lot of really cool pink flaky polishes but I don't own all of them so like <laughs> personal issue. <laughs> Alright and so that is everything for favorites. The Polish Pickup store is open right now on polishpickup.com. They also have a UK site for all those of you who are across the pond. So links and everything will be down below. Thank you all so, so much for watching. So I hope my energy was okay for this video. If you do not know, I, I didn't want to make a lot of posts about it, but my dog Isabel recently died and I just have not really felt like doing much of anything, to be honest. Um, I had her for 11 years. She would have been 12 in March. So I've had her, I had her since she was about 20 weeks old. So I am having a hard time to be honest. Um, I'm okay, like I feel like I'm get, um, able to push myself to do more the past couple of days, but the first couple of days were rough, to be honest. They were really rough. Um, I'm doing okay now, um, but yeah, so if my energy just seemed off, that is why I am just trying not to cry <laughs> constantly. Um, so yeah, just thank you all so much for watching. I apologize for ending the video on like a dreary note. But I just wanted to explain why I haven't posted a video in a little bit, why I haven't really posted on Instagram, and that that is why. I just, this is the first time that, like, I've really gotten dressed pretty much, well, I got dressed from my shirt. I didn't, I didn't change my sweatpants. <laughs> but I'm, I'm dressed from the waist up, so that's what counts, and I just, yeah. So, that's it. So I would love to know what everyone is planning on picking up from Polish Pickup this month. Um, I already did my shopping. I'll pop my picture up here. So yeah, one of the polishes that I picked up, I only, I got it for two reasons. One, because it is 
themed after Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and two, because I really, really, really wanted to compare it to one of my favorite polishes in the whole world. It looks like it'll be a very close dupe for Heather's Hughes Scorpius, which is one of my favorite polishes ever, if not my favorite. And there are a couple other things on my wish list. I don't know yet if I'm going to go back and grab them. Let me know what everyone is planning on picking up. Don't forget to hit the like button on your way out, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye! Yeah.